Hey nerds, it's Zan, and by popular demand, I am posting my VOD for my reaction to the End of Dragons announcement live stream. I will eventually also be posting a summary, all of the things that I liked, what I'm looking most forward to, and all of the hype around the extra promotion that ArenaNet is getting for this project as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the content, and make sure to check the links down below because if you haven't pre-ordered End of Dragons yet, using my link supports me as an ArenaNet partner. Enjoy, and I'll see you guys at the next one. That was a cool transition. And the trailer! This land. Oh, this trailer. It's a monument to mortal resilience. Oh yeah, it's the teaser. They're just doing the teaser? I assumed it would be the full thing. They built new lives upon the very thing they that might sought to end theirs. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Flames. Brilliant, hot, then gone. Those who face each other. Can you guys still hear me over it, though? What a lifetime oh, means. full thing last? Okay, what I'm used to square. Means. So for square, it's always the full thing first. You know, first. it doesn't have to be this way. No, Kunavine. It does. They need me. Cool. And thank you guys so much for all of the follows and 20, the, uh, uh, the subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, Tyria. Welcome to the Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons first look. I'm Ruby Bear, Arena Net Community Manager, and we are all so happy you're here today. We know you've been looking forward to this for a long time, and we have too. With me are our lead content designer, Andrew Gray, and studio director, Colin Johansson. Hi, guys. Colin! Hey, everyone. Really excited to be here <laughs> sharing details about it. Just Dragons. everyone immediately, Colin! Hey, Guild Wars community. It's nice to see you all good? again. It's okay, been good. a little while. It's nice to be back in the chair. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh. Uh, you know, oh this is God. a really big day Smile. for us. Uh, back when we started development on Guild Wars 1, uh, our very first campaign. That's was awesome. Factions in Cantha. That's awesome. Uh, and That's what I was saying. I was excited because they were like 25K uh, or 30K we of of people of uh, our watching first the actual live update uh, Furnace, channel, those which is awesome. Remember that. Uh, and Factions was an incredible journey and learning opportunity for all of us in the studio. Uh, we'd never made an expansion before as a studio, and so many of the lessons we learned from that expansion really resonate in the way even we still approach expansions today. Uh, it's been 15 years. Doesn't hmm. feel like that long. It's been no. 15 years since 15 we first visited Tampa in the Guild Wars franchise. That's true. Uh, and it's truly wow. special for all of us to finally get a chance to go back there Is once the audio more. out of sync for y'all? You know, small you know, claim to fame here. It's if fine you have me. a copy of Guild Wars Factions, fine I can me. proudly say the okay. screenshots on the back were taken by yours truly. <laughs> nice work. Wait, are you <laughs> talking about for streamers? So actually? in addition to being the setting of our first ever expansion, Cantha was also home to the final story we told in Guild Wars Beyond, the content we created in, in Guild Wars to bridge the gap to Guild Wars 2. That content, Winds of Change, was also the last piece of content I personally got to work on in Guild Wars 2. So it holds a really special place in my heart. You feel old? But today, we're talking about End of Dragons. I'm probably Basically, older from than the most day of you. we announced Guild Wars 2, plays have been can't the win. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I remember right around launch, uh, there's an interview with a content creator, Matt Visual. Uh, oh, and never mind. Uh, the entire interview, he just kept saying <laughs> Cantha and staring at me over and over again, <laughs> waiting for me to twitch or give away anything whatsoever that would give a hint as to when Cantha was coming. And I remember Dan Howell just straight up hounding me to say Cantha confirmed during a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, Matt, Dan, and all of you who wondered about Cantha, today is your lucky day. We promised you a tidal wave of information for End of Dragons, and we uh. are ready to deliver that. We have members of the End of Dragons development team no joining puns. us throughout the rest of the show, and this is Stop. only the beginning. Today is just your first look. We're going to be giving you more details on everything we Holy announced puns. today leading up to the launch of End of Dragons. We also don't want to spoil everything. We're going to save lots of things for you to discover for yourself when End of Dragons launches in early 2022. <laughs> we don't want to spoil so everything, but we went over the full right story now, <laughs> of End of Dragons. Or of uh, Guild Wars Panic. 2 before End of Dragons. Okay, new trailer. Okay, let's do this. There's familiarity. In this strangeness, it's so pretty. Like song, Hello, unknown dragon. I remembered a tune without words to carry it. I know you, and yet I, like I don't. This. You will soon, little one. Who are you talking to? Just an echo in the mist, a possibility. Oh. Look around us. Your children would be trapped in the past, if not for me. 
Their worlds are carved from the jade that I gave purpose. I promised them a future. A century of progress cannot end this way. I'm not... Kantha's not just a spoke in some grand cosmic wheel. It's so cool. It's so pretty. Would a great innovator... In portions of it are actually, so like, look like they're underwater, future. too. I won't. <gasps> Yay, I'll Vigi! find a way to save us all. Oh my gosh. My trend and, and is the unknown dragon supposed to be Glint's baby? Because I don't know anything about that yet. Yeah. The future is out there. What are we waiting for? That's so cool. I don't like. This so deck. wait. <laughs> We hope you liked the new trailer. That if you're is not so already, cool. Tell us in chat what you think. There's a lot in there for everyone to go back and dig through and find, and we encourage you to go rewatch the trailer after the show and see what else you can discover. Who were those aether blades that were back there? Evidently. And who was that mysterious Asura that was next to Anka? Could it be they, the? They literally just took the, the speculation uh, meter and just court? sent it off the chart. Possibly. I know, seriously. <laughs> so we got to see the trailer, and I'm excited for them to find everything out. But that is just the beginning of today's reveal. I everything. The first area of End of Dragons we're going to take a look at is a slightly deeper look into the story, the setting, and the world. Something I'm really proud of in End of Dragons is That's how so closely cool. the Powered by demons. work together to shape the <laughs> themes in the story. <laughs> the the I'm so the excited. There's so much. Complement one another. They do. And so one of the things that, that like, those developers uh, Chuck the and I were talking about that we thought would be really cool. Well, A, obviously the sea is no longer Jane. In the cycle beginning, does that mean that the cycle the with the dragons begins again? And they have to have hope. Is the culmination of so much what I was of saying. what we've been doing in the Guild Wars. Was that Wars obviously they're forces of nature, so they're not just going to go of away. Really compelling There's open going to be other things that, that will have their same uh, forces of nature, over the years, regardless of if they're even dragons. We're so this would mean that it all would start again, right? And I think players should be excited about how we've weaved all these different interpersonal stories with the great cosmological yeah. questions of Tyria right. into so some satisfying payoffs state. that I think they'll really Trying enjoy. To, yeah. Last time and, we were and does that mean that the sea is, like, change, the dragon is supposed to be kept uh, under the sea because of, you know, um, like, the jade is protecting it from And what we basically saw so was have, like, there is a lot of lingering uh, consequences of the uh, of Shiro's rise, and we teamed up with this group, the Ministry of Purity, in order to try to purify like the region. Yeah, they didn't stop at just trying so to purify cool. like disease. They started trying to kick out everybody else who didn't fit with their hey, ideal Grim, image. Hey, what's up? You missed the trailer, they, man. What they wanted Cantha to be like, and then they closed off to the rest of the world, and that was where we left things. So it's easy to we imagine have to take this that to the because Twitter already. Cantha was closed off, that they would become a time capsule. However, they've been affected by the same events that have been affecting the rest of Tyria. The rise Hashtag of Titan, Guild Wars the death too. of Balthazar. All of these things have had just as much of an effect on Cantha as they have had on the rest of the world. That's so we cool. actually, as a team, fairly early on, what? made That's a spoiler. timeline of all the major events that happened in the world and how they would have affected Cantha in order to try to figure out oh, you missed it. how good. this it's world good. would have been shaped over time. Uh, longtime fans who really loved Cantha and Guild Wars 1 are gonna find a ton and to see, love. See, I have to, I have to finish playing Guild Wars 1 because Chuck and I started players, it. Frankly, new players might have their minds blown a little bit. It wouldn't be Guild Wars 2, it wouldn't be the story of the commander without the commander's allies. Um, in End of Dragons, we find ourselves traveling oh, with God. Marjorie and Casimir. I think anybody who really misses Jory the detective is in for a treat. The most important They're familiar face that's going to be uh, accompanying us <laughs> on our journey into Cantha <laughs> is Aureen. Aureen's story has become sort of the spine of the Guild right. Wars 2 story. Aureen that's... is constantly grappling with her responsibility and how much she needs that to do. Dragonfall. And her trying to feel yes. that out okay, so is I didn't going to have repercussions for the entire yeah. world. Yeah. Okay. In I this figured. expansion. And for anybody saying that that's spoilers, really like I actually figured that, by the way, that that's what the, the dragon world was that we could. 
You know, there are so many little moments throughout the world, moments that touch you, moments that make you laugh, moments wow. that make you cry. You know, this this team is so good at, at just bringing emotions to the surface. What I'm most proud about is how we were able to really craft a story yeah. that this is literally information very elegantly for me right now. The gameplay elements I've literally that just been sitting here with my mouth really open for like five minutes. A story like that just keeps a really good. frenetic yeah. pace the cutscene, and like the cutscenes you live look amazing. out in world like, while also like, experiencing then, like, a lot of really cool gameplay moments. Too. Like, this looks so There are good. so many things that I am uh, excited about people experiencing for the story of Ender It Dragons. really, it looks uh, so smooth. One, just from a design perspective, we have so much technology that has improved or has been entirely new since the last time we made an expansion. And as a result, this expansion has some really unique, cool set pieces that I think are going to blow people's minds. All right. That's cool. Also, yes, we... Hey, Eric Ishii. Yep. Yes. Hello, so I, I, I already Ishii listened to most of and these. And I so. play June in End of Dragons. June. Like Connor said, the story in End of Dragons is the culmination of a I don't know. long <laughs> of story threads, from stories that began 15 years ago, all the way up to stories and events that you took part in over Getting the past some year. Yeah, it and is, it is. It is. It's for Kanta, but Asian aesthetic, true. so it is like, who got uh, it? Somebody who loves the world building part of the job, like, it was a great experience to sit down with the narrative team and some designers and, like, sort of plot out the last Okay, I'm gonna have to, like, the history of an empire. completely right? watch yeah, all crazy. of this again for the uh, YouTube video that I want to put is to create a world and story that's for my hype YouTube video later. Of you who remember Especially because right now I'm still not like super awake yet, so I'm really excited. But like nothing, who are visiting like I'm, I'm, I'm just like hype about everything. I'm not actually like step into this new cantha. You know, Nick Hernandez and Ali B are up next to tell you about map and content design. When we started designing the, End of like Dragons, the we wanted to incorporate look, the verticality that Heart of Thorns brought. They look so good! And we wanted to be able to the freedom of movement from Path of Fire also. So I've, and I've literally been tweeting this whole yeah, thing, too. Yeah, like, just showing them all of the love, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's my favorite thing about their map design. So, like, if you guys are following my me on Twitter... My name is Ali B. Um, I'm one of our senior content designers, sure and I work primarily in stuff. our open world area. Um, my name is Nick Hernandez. Uh, I am a game designer here at ArenaNet. It is. And it is amazing. I am a content designer for the Xingj map. So fans can expect from the end of Dragon Maps to kind of really feel something new and different that they haven't experienced before. With End of Dragons, things are a bit more differentiated between each of the maps, and each of them has their own unique feel. For Xingj specifically, tried our best to make uh, content that wow. hits up all oh, gameplay oh, types. Oh, look at the mountains! Right? You guys, think you guys, like did you see the mountains? Did you see island. them? Did you it's see like them? This beautiful, oh my gosh! Serene, and then all of the cherry blossoms. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. Uh, spacious <laughs> uh, locale that feels both peaceful so and not. Did you guys see the mountains? Right, depending on in the back. where you are and what's going on. Um, so some of the highlights of the Echovald map are definitely those gargantuan trees, the lake, uh, the rivers that kind of pour into the lake where you kind of have these getting 34K uh, underground in the rivulets That's and stuff so like that good. where the player can kind of traverse through there. I didn't even know definitely 34K those gargantuan people knew trees about this game. That verticality <laughs> and freedom of movement we talked about before. So if you've this got is... a sky scale, that's going to feel really cool. Oh, that so is Kampa perfect. is definitely not the same yeah. as it was in Guild Wars 1. What you have to remember is that it's been 250 years, so how has <gasps> that area evolved? What's the geography like now? Oh, wow. Are the trees still petrified? Like, what's, right. what's kind of going on with that? Um, as Isn't well as cool the people, like right? So the people who like were there 250 light, years ago might not be the same people. Um, like, but there are definitely so some like familiar buildings horrific, and structures. But pretty. So what it's players so cool. can find or will find uh, with Xing Jie is that it is topographically different than it used to be, but not to a point where there aren't familiar tones. Like, I think I'm most excited for when we finally get to release the dragon. It's just bridge in seeing front of it. how it, players at, like, 20 different feel angles, about and I think it was the maps like the in and of themselves. <laughs> I would love to see how people feel about all of the work that's been put into the world wow. and the world narrative, it's and so vibrant. you know so how vibrant. that gameplay and those yeah. stories yeah. make people feel, Fishing. Um, and just get reception on what they think of it. I think it's going to be really exciting. Hey everybody, I'm Noshi Dalal. You'll be hearing me as Detective Rama in Guild Wars 2 and of Dragons. <laughs> we and that's why he's a voice actor. <laughs> and Echo Vault, how the game and game world are different now, and how those changes affect map and content so design. Sweet. 
And that's just two of the maps. Yeah. When we sat down to make End of Dragons open world content, we kept replayability in the forefront of our minds. We want all the End of Dragons maps to be maps you continue to and go And that's what's good. Ago. Them actually yeah, focusing on replayability. The like, that's what no other fire. MMO or How can like, the change game the really <laughs> is doing right now, except for like achievements. So many things that yeah. Guild Wars 2 Amnu has to got, offer. Get, and like Ellie mentioned, the these maps are to kill tons of fun to explore. And they're especially fun to explore on your mounts. Speaking of mounts, uh, here's another End of Dragons preview for Wait, you. Wait, are they going to show us what the mount is? What? The mount? Oh my god! I knew it was a water mount! Dude! Yo, I said it was water I said it was a water mount. Not a skimmer, a water mount. I said it, you heard it one of the most iconic and memorable creatures from Guild Wars 1 in Cantha. So when we first talked about a mount for End of Dragons, the Siege Turtle immediately made it on the Mounts are a defining feature in Guild Wars 2. Literally was like, because it's traditions. sea, and then so the a lot of it are like mountains, and like has those mount. ridges to get up the on land. It's going to be something that you can benefit from both, but it's going to be mostly water. Nobody believed me. 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 Nobody because like you don't Guild have Wars to have mounts, like you don't have really to have access to everything else. You can just hop on someone's feet. Into getting their behaviors to feel believable that is and so alive. Cool. I spent months watching turtle videos while prototyping <laughs> um, the animations for the turtle. This um, poor guy. Just turtles eating, walking, sprinting. Turtles do run. There's videos of it. I've seen them. <laughs> so my favorite thing to animate on the sea turtle <laughs> was just a simple walk animation. It really got me into the mentality oh of a turtle that watching is the these giant thing ever. turtles and <laughs> this how guy. they walk and what their foot placements are. <laughs> Some if of you us watch turtle videos anyway. Yeah. Okay. In the game, it kind of mm -hmm. maps out to more or less a turtle's walk speed. I actually did the calculations, and it was like, oh my <gasps> gosh, that's like the exact speed. Perfect, I nailed it. <laughs> when you think of turtles, you don't really think fast. So getting this thing to run over terrain in a fun and rewarding way was uh, an awesome challenge. The Siege Turtle is a personal favorite of mine, and I am incredibly excited to see players be able to hop on one for the first time and really experience the power and awesomeness that is the Siege Turtle. Show it in game, you cowards. <laughs> I'm surprised they even showed it at all, my dude. <laughs> Hey, I'm Tina Wong, and I play Empress Yin, and uh, Calidris, and Akane, and Tengu Reporter, and all sorts of other okay, characters that off. you might meet later down the road in the expansion of Guild Wars 2, End of Dragons. Oh, we're getting pistol then. <laughs> Calidris, go back. I play this, the this, 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 and this. A two person <laughs> co op mount is something we're so eager for you to experience in End of Dragons. I remember several years ago, we had a company wide meeting to brainstorm what we wanted for the next expansion. And Siege this Turtles is so was one hype. Of the like, very they had a company wide meeting out. a couple of we years ago, and they, they came part up with this. Hello, I'm, Hello, I'm VA playing characters. Hello, I'm VA playing. Lux and Armada. I agree. Fire Cook wasn't kidding when he said that both the driver and Buster are going to participate in the fun. Uh, you also may have noticed that the Siege Turtle looked a little more high-tech compared that's to cool. last time. A little, a little more tricked out. Yeah, 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 that's actually a common thread in Cantha. Uh, we're going to be telling you more about that. And in fact, there's going to be a, uh article about Dragon Jade technology on our website later today. Oh, that's so cool! So the Siege <laughs> Turtle is... This is ridiculous, because now I'm going to have to watch coming. this. I'm going to have to read the share, article. So let's see what else he has to tell you all. How are my reps? Fishing! Fishing! Only took nine years. <laughs> this confirmed! I'm Kirk Wallford. I'm a senior game designer at ArenaNet and I'm a team lead on End of Dragons. We've been wanting to put fishing in Guild See, Wars 2 for awesome as long as it's been around. Deep sea it just always came down to finding the best time and place. Just put in for when we were building fishing for Guild Wars 2, uh, we looked at our own square. personal experiences going and fishing, fishing and found what was the most fun. Wow, and and for me, when I went fishing as a kid, like I went with my family. And, and so when well. we bring that into Guild Wars 2, we wanted to think about how can we make that a multiplayer experience. You can fish off of docks, or we've created skiffs, which allow you to fish that around the so waters cool. of Turia by taking your fishing boat and exploring with your friends. <laughs> we wanted the waters of Turia to feel Yo, as authentic yeah, as we fishing could trips, and most lifelike as we could to a real fishing yep. experience. And so there are hundreds of different fish for you to discover in, in Turia all across the world. There are so many that have been added to the game, and Core kudos fishing. to that first person who oh, finds God, all of them. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, including saying. the common goldfish, as well as the most notorious uh, catfish in Ascalon, Old Whiskers. 
End of it's Dragons funny, has five no new fish tracks, right now in the game. The there's no turtle, fish dish skips, that you can cook as a cook. Which means they're fish doing a lot. Of each with their own levels of progression for players to discover as they explore Kappa. There's actually a I'm most excited about the release of End of Dragons that's for players to really like, be able to come together and experience the world that we've been creating that, in Kanta. Like, we've all wanted to go to Kanta for like the longest time, and the team has like done such a great job bringing it to life. I just can't wait for players to see it. Like, to make it more, like, interactive is, like, for what they did. Wait. I'm Rai Chase, and I voice Yao, your local, mostly friendly, agender engineer. Like Kirk said, we've been wanting to add fishing for a long time. I don't remember, and but you know really what I'm talking about, Pedro. Submarines so next. The Achievement fish would be so cool, wouldn't they? Like a specific fish, fish that can only be caught in a specific area at a specific time. Shore or skiffs. Skiffs, by the way, are another of the five new mastery tracks that Kirk nasties. mentioned, along with oh, sea turtles. Oh, that's cool! Going out with your party and fishing is Yo, just a Yo, you level up your skiff. You're able to anchor your boat and just walk around. Yeah. 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 Fishing, obviously, but you can also yeah. dance. Yeah, level up, guys. Build fishing shanties trips, let's go. Your instruments. And if you didn't catch it, fishing is not restricted boat, to Canada. And I'm happy. You can fish all over <laughs> Tyria, and if you want to catch every fish in a game, you need to kind of go on a, a full world tour of fishing. Half a fire fishing, let's go. go. Fish in orc basin. Uh, we'll have more details on these mastery lines, as well as the remaining two unannounced lines between now and the end of, Dra uh, end of Dragon's launch. For our next look at End of Dragons, let's see some legendaries that will come with the All right, this is what I'm hiding for. <laughs> let's do it. Oh, boy. Oh, snap. Chelsea Mills I'm Chelsea Mills, is, is and I'm a senior yep. prop artist. In End of Dragons, we're introducing Ooh. 16 new legendary weapons, all available on release okay. day. Oh. This set of legendaries is inspired by the Elder Dragon, Areen, who plays a significant so role in the End of Dragons sword? story. From an art perspective, we wanted the legendaries to show Areen's journey with the commander. And considering the first everyone loves like the Areen skins, and aren't they like only on the now, all shop? Grown up as it's our kind of cool to have something dragon. in game that you can work for. The precursors right? represent baby Areen, while the legendaries represent adult Areen. Areen is one of my favorite characters, <laughs> and I'm so happy that we got to create a legendary set based on her. I can't wait to see players running around in game with the legendaries. Oh, Reddit's not gonna like this. Yeah, oh, no. they're they're all Orin weapons. Hi, I'm Nina yeah. Hashino. I'm from Kunavang, and I'm so excited that you guys get to be reacquainted with her. Kunavang. It's so cute. These 16 new Orin style legendaries are all going to be available on End of Dragons launch day. And if you want a head start, you can earn a one voucher six. for one of the precursors Chelsea talked about with the current return I mean, to living I guess world that makes sense. And we'll talk a little more about that these. later. I am oh, that's neat. To get these weapons. I like, need them. It's neat that you can get a I'm precursor champion. with these. Like, I should uh, have legendaries that make me look well. the part. I'm Orin's champion. Well, that's I wonder if we're going to actually get quests <laughs> for them again. So next up, here's Cameron Rich to talk about strike missions and encounters. Strikes? Strike missions? I'm sorry? They said they weren't done. Hi, yeah, no I am Cameron Rich. I'm a senior game designer here at ArenaNet, and I act as the lead for the encounter story. Yeah, they said they weren't done. For Nobody End of Dragons believed Strike them. Missions, and we're now... taking some epic <laughs> encounters from the story of End of Dragons, and we're creating really awesome, mm. challenging 10-man versions of That is of so those pretty. To actually see it enjoy. and not just the artwork. For End of Dragon Strike Missions, we're doing something new it in that we're adding challenge mode difficulty to each Holy Strike shit. Mission to release with End of Dragon. They just haven't said These anything about it. Will be Relax, enabled they shortly still after launch, raids. And they are this designed to give look. our hardcore players, our existing look. raiders, uh, something to really wow. sink their teeth into. Yeah, this is the new in addition list. to the challenge modes, we're also huh? going to be oh, revamping the reward system for strike missions to simplify cool. and standardize them across the game. Sure. Within sure. of Dragons, creatures and combatants, we're Close taking a little bit of a different approach with design. One of the common problems that we're trying to address is coming across a creature that's of a high rank that feels like it just has a bunch more health and a bunch more damage. So instead, this time around, uh, you'll see creatures unlock new abilities as they increase in rank. So oh, if you find a creature neat. on the field that's a veteran, it might be using one set of skills. And if you come across it again and it's an elite or a champion, it'll have unlocked some new skills along the way that will hopefully test you and your strengths as a player. Look at how cool I'm that I'm really, really excited for fans to get their hands on the strike missions yeah, for End of Dragons. Cool. Uh, because there's a lot of surprises that we've been able to put into the design. Lots of opportunity to work together with your friends to overcome some really epic bosses. That's neat. Raids went. Hang on. They might announce them. They Hang might. on. I mean, raids usually don't come out on lock. They always wait a little after the 
He's the best. And I'm happy to be a part of the cast for End of Wait, Dragons. Wait, this is the guy who played Yep. Yep. <laughs> I love his voice. We know how many of you are looking forward to taking on some new challenges, and we can't wait to see you tackle these new encounters. You'll find additional challenge modes and improved rewards. What you just saw was a sneak peek at some of the maps for the strike missions. We can't show you the bosses or the fights quite yet, as it would be a huge story spoiler. So we look forward to when you discover them would in the expansion. Would be a huge story spoiler. And when you show was that, the full and you can expect story. challenge mode to live up to the name. <laughs> Cam and his team are doing an amazing job creating diverse, challenging content. All of the fights are a ton of fun. They're probably some of my favorite things in the expansion. They are super good. I'm going to have to watch this again and write everything from Guild down Wars factions, for the YouTube like video. Like Naga, Kappa, <laughs> and Wallows, all updated for Guild Wars 2. Reimagining these familiar armies in Guild Wars 2 was an exciting challenge, and I'm super pleased with the results. The team is also revisiting how we, do, uh, how we work at scaling creatures, so instead of just, you know, getting a bunch of health, they actually get new abilities as they level up. Nice. So, um, Andrew, why don't you tell us who we're going to hear from next? You're going to hear from past me about guild halls. <laughs> Wait. Guild halls. Guild halls. Yes. What are we doing with the uh, aisles? Of there's a new one. Show it. My name is Andrew Gray. I'm the content design lead on Guild Wars 2. So one of the coolest things about the guild hall is the location we chose. It is some fine beachfront property in the old Shinjay nice. Arena. That was one of the most beautiful maps in the We're original moving. game. <laughs> uh, and it's even more beautiful in Guild Wars 2. And it also has a lot of historical relevance because it was the location that the original leader of the Ministry of Purity was defeated. <laughs> Get the UL right. We're moving. Guild acquisition works similarly to other guild halls in that you go on an expedition. Uh, we did build the expedition a little bit differently this time, though, where we focused more on uh, smaller encounters. We made, uh, you know, scaling uh, a big cornerstone of it so that even if you're in with a small group, you can go in there and you can defeat it. It's a lot more encounter focused, so you're, you know, fighting individual bosses versus like, Wow, that's a lot of enemies on the screen. <laughs> so my favorite highlight is the amount of water in the space. Uh, we deliberately chose an island because we wanted it to pair really well with skiffs and fishing, nice. and it, it really worked out well. Um, it's just a ton of fun to go around with your guildies <laughs> that going is going around to be our on a little fishing thing. trip and your, at your guild hall. Moving like, the guild hall. the comfort of your own guild hall. <laughs> and guild fishing trips. Um, and then also there's a really large guild arena that's right there on the beach. So if you're into like Mai Tai fueled guild battles, like oh, this that is the is guild cool. hall for you. My favorite part about building the guild hall was honestly arena. just spending time yes. in the area. Yes. It felt like I was going on vacation every day because it's so beautiful. Uh, Too much but beyond water. that, uh, when gorgeous. we built the expedition, we, we decided to build one with a little bit more of a story behind it. Uh, yeah. uh, you have, you have some mean, familiar characters there, both GBC existing stuff, friends so. and some that you meet along the in the dragons yeah. that, that add a little bit more personality to the acquisition process. And I, and I think players are really going to enjoy that. I'm most excited to see uh, how guild decorators use this space, honestly. Um, I'm You're not always allowed blown to put anything up the, uh, unless it matches the aesthetic. The crazy things that they're able to build kidding. in guild halls. And when we built this one, we specifically <laughs> had them in mind. We wanted to leave lots of space for them to be able to <laughs> build all their crazy adventures in there. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see not, you know, what they do with the space that we've oh, made. If you guys want to hang out with us in Discord, we, we have a we bunch of people that are in voice right now. So if you join, uh, if you're not in the Discord already, and thank you so much for the follows oh, and subs oh. and gifts. Hi, I'm Sarah Sklovich, uh, and I am I've the voice of Anka and End of Dragons. Character just full of it. Um, if you join, just make sure that you choose your role for Guild Wars 2 under Choose Roles, and that way you can Hi, get into the Guild Hi, I'm Kelly Hu, and I play Captain uh, Mai Trin in the Aether Blade Armada in Guild Wars 2, End of of dragon. Oh yeah, she's definitely back. Welcome yeah. to my trend. <laughs> Good work, Past Andrew. I play my trend. Thank you for sharing all of this and getting players ready for their new Canton Guild Hall. I cannot stress how beautiful this map is. I love how everybody's raising questions. Was that my trend? And then she's like, I'm playing my trend. <laughs> yeah. He came back and the work he did on this map is just phenomenal. Yeah. So at this I know. point, you're probably That's why they're voice what's actors. next for elite <laughs> specializations, because we That's don't have those for. quite yet. So thank you for hanging in there. Thank Andrew, God. why don't you All get right. us started? So elite specializations offer players a fundamentally new way to experience their profession. They give players okay, access to ready? new play styles by changing yes. their profession's core Skull. mechanics and unlocking new weapon and utility skills. Our elite specializations for the Dragons... Dual Dagger Mesmer! Dual Dagger Mesmer, Mesmer. let's go! ...to truly tie these elite specs into the region. We've also broken a lot of our rules with profession and elite specialization design. And Good. I think players are going to really enjoy the result. Yeah. So Wrong. today we're going to give you an overview of the core mechanic changes and weapon and utility skills for the elite spec that we teased a few weeks ago. 
Afterwards, I'll be joined live by a few members of our development team to talk about what's coming next for Guild Wars 2 in 2021, give you our beta dates, and wrap up today's show. So they're only showing off Mesmer. Yep. You, also. you gotta be kidding me. This, this is good. This is good. Hi, everyone. I'm Carl McLean, a senior combat designer working on elite specializations for End of Dragons. We're here today to preview some of the abilities for the upcoming Mesmer Elite dagger. Specialization. It's a dagger. Tool. Let's jump right oh, into it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was right. And then everybody was saying I was wrong. Everybody was saying it was a sphere. To begin, let's briefly cover the profession mechanic changes. Five clones? From the start, you will no longer have access to clones. Yeah. Instead of creating clones, the Virtuoso yeah. will stop Yo, this is exactly what I said in my freaking thing. This is exactly what I was like. There will be clones. I would literally just be using the daggers that you spawn. When they finish with their action. We'll have some brief demonstrations of different ways yeah, to actually, gain you know what it looks during like. this preview. Now, let's go no. look at the Virtuoso's Jailbox. weapon. The it looks like a cross between Ice Mage the and The first skill for the Virtuoso's for dagger is a consistent projectile attack the called the Flying Lewis. Cutter. Yeah. Instead of a payout of a three auto attack chain, oh, any target weapon. struck by it's three of the projectiles that launches will receive version. multiple right. additional attacks on the third impact. There had the second skill of this weapon is Blade Call. This ability spreads daggers which pause at their ending point or wherever they collide question. with terrain and then return to the virtual for a second. That's actually really because that's exactly, this is exactly what Chalk and I had predicted and people picked on me in my video. <laughs> Here you can see a blade stocked set. above my character's left shoulder. Then stocking a second yeah. blade yeah, shows no another above up, my right. right shoulder. Unstable Blade Storm is the third ability, dealing pulsing damage along its path like, and hurling blades. All at excited about all of it, and I'm like, okay, so I have to do a video on the trailer. I have to do a video okay. on just Let's this. Let's use some of the stock <laughs> blades we've accumulated because it was something that I talked about. I have to blade talk about all of the Harmony changes. Blade Song Harmony is the Virtuoso's it. most accessible blade. This is gonna be like six videos. Expanding each stock blade separately over a period of time that deals damage to your target enemy. Blade Song Sorrow, each of your stocked blades readies itself then launches toward your targeted enemy to strike them simultaneously while inflicting confusion. We'll rebuild a few of our blades after this by switching to a greatsword, then using Mirror Blade and Phantasmal Berserker. Blade Song Dissonance. Combine all your blades into a single strike that dazes I enemies. I love that that's what it is, though, because it takes like all of the added con like we'll the a conditions full set of blades that by you using would the utility get from your blade clones renewal. and has the daggers do them too, like for the blade same like Requiem F skills. That's will cool. block for a short time and deal damage to nearby enemies based on the number of blades stocked. This is basically what I predicted it was going to be, and I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah same. same. <laughs> like ex exactly what I said in the video. Restoration, <laughs> which throws daggers at enemies and the grants the bonus effects if you get foes with them. This gives Aegis. Yeah. Yep, this As covered before, cool. Blade Renewal will grant My distortion God, and fully stock tank. all blades that can be used differently for each of the blade songs. That's, yeah, that's Rain really Rain of cool. Blades drops daggers on foes for its duration, punishing enemies that remain in its area. That's a cool animation. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sword of decimation is a single impact in an area to strategically they immobilize have enemies. Males? Yeah. It annoys me. How do you get 25? Psychic force is an uh, area attack the around animals? the virtuoso that pushes yeah. enemies away. And Kinda finally, like they, Thousand Cuts as your elite skill the, is a fire and forget line based damaging ability that requires foes to stay in its narrow path for full effect. Oh, that's cool. And it's a fire and forget. So it's literally just. Here you so go. there you have each of the abilities that, that the Virtuoso can harness for the expansion. We'll <laughs> cover the traits another time. Yeah. We're excited to yeah, see I how mean, the daggers fly did you when you get your hands on this burly elite specialization. I've been Carl McLean, and on behalf of ArenaNet and the skills team, thank you, and we'll see you again soon. Yeah. And you're going to be able to get those gauntlets. Um, as, yeah. as a part of the, as a part of the spec. And those are awesome. And I just think it, like, it's so funny because that's exactly what I said. And Chalk and I had discussed it. We're like, it's this, this, hey, this. Hey, everybody, I did the video it's Debbie Derryberry, the voice of <sighs> Timmy, your oh, favorite, God. my favorite. We're so excited to be coming back for End of Dragon. This is what I sound like? Are you guys so kidding me? <laughs> so great. Yes. Yep. See you there. Oh, no. <laughs> Andrew has headed back oh to keep working God. on End of Dragons for all of you. Colin has rejoined me, and <laughs> Josh Davis, our head of live operations, is here as well. Uh, thanks, Ruby. Uh, hello, everybody. It's been a minute. 
Uh, it's great to be back at the studio oh again, uh, just in time to crash this live stream and, you know, I that myself. <laughs> Thank you for I literally crashing. just laughed so hard that so, I'm crying over here because I never yeah, realized so, uh, that I, like, like Andrew mentioned before, I've listened to it in games, but it was, like, in the ambient dialogue, not, like, like dragons, this. Uh, which I think is going to be pretty interesting overall. Uh, I think the fact that the virtual is <laughs> a clone mechanic, uh, which has been a staple of Mesmer gameplay since release, is a bit of a testament to this. Uh, you know, for me, Virtuoso feels oh, like an no. entirely new profession, and I think you're going to see a similar design approach with all of the other yeah, specializations. Yeah, the lack of clones means you really can't do Condi with it, because Condi, like, the clones were a big part of Condi. Throughout the rest of 2021, along with other End of Dragons features that we mentioned today, like those other two mastery tracks. <laughs> we got off to a great start. We got to share so many things about the expansion. Colleen, you want to give us a quick recap? I would love to recap that. <laughs> Ten seconds. Today. All right. Uh, so what have we heard about? Canthan region. We've got a storyline. Yeah. Mysterious Dragon J technology. Creatures and masteries. New elite specializations. New strikes, each with their own challenge mode. A new Canthan guild hall. Fishing and fishing boats. We're calling those skiffs. And two-player mounts. This is the first time we're adding multiplayer mounts to Guild Wars 2. And one of the things I'm most excited about the, about this expansion is it draws on some of the best elements like, and lessons all of that from our is previous huge. two expansions. Uh, for story, that we looked step at up some of graphics, the best like, things that we did huge. in Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. And then we brought that approach into End of Dragons, and I think it's the best story we've done yet. And then we, at, we looked at replay value. Uh, and, you know, Heart of Thorns, uh, one of the big things that we've seen comments from our players about Heart of Thorns was they love the amount of replay value that expansion mm -hmm. added to the game. Uh, and so we really invested in this. <laughs> They're not going to show you guys yet. Uh, in our strikes, having challenge modes, and having a full set of legendary weapons, the full yeah. 16 on launch day, day one. Uh, there's a lot of replay value, and this is about an expansion that you can play for a long time. And we realize that's very important yep. to our players. Uh, we also wanted to have game systems that impact not just the expansion, but the entire game. Uh, and really to look at the game deeply and systemically as a whole, the way we've done with gliding and with mounts and other expansions. Um, and so with End of Dragons, if you look at the uh, multiplayer mounts, that is an investment in us saying, hey, Path of Fire had mounts. We're going to try having multiplayer mounts with the turtle, and that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, fishing and multiplayer fishing with skiffs is a game-wide experience that you can have, and I think that's really exciting too. Uh, our mysterious dragon jade disappointing. technology. Yeah, I think the we'll find only out thing more that about that someday. Could find also has had this approach with the legendaries. I think they uh, and there's two other really big things that we're working on that really represent. play into the story of this but expansion. But a lot of people are upset that they're all world players, like exactly the same. Is a major feature that folks have been waiting for for a long time, yeah. and it yeah. comes in our end of dragons time frame. And it's a big because thing it's that we know is about systemically approaching. Um, well, ways to see. improve the game forever for our players. Uh, and then the like other big one we're investing in is our technology. Of them. And by uh, investing in taking the game from DX9 to DX11 and a lot of the things that have been But I think that's the that, only we thing really want to invest that in holistically. I've... How do we make it Like for me, they still look just cool, but I understand, especially for those who have already uh, gotten that. As a final set, note for, for me, sure. uh, though this expansion is named the Ender Dragons, like the reason I want to be abundantly clear this is not the end of Guild Wars 2. Uh, we view End of Dragons as the next big stepping stone for this franchise, and we think the best is yet to come. Uh, there is plenty more coming after End of Dragons and Guild Wars 2. Uh, we're not going to tell you about any of it today, uh, but we're very excited for you all to get to check See, it out. See, that's cool. But we because do a lot of have people assume lots for you to check out the time that was going to be like the, the last of expansion, Dragons. especially if it Josh, didn't you're do up. well. Yes, thank you. Uh, and we've got a lot to go through, so please bear with me. Uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, first, in case you've been living under a rock, um, I do want to bring attention to the Living World Returns campaign, which is taking players back to Living World Seasons 2, 3, 4, and the Ice Brute Saga. Uh, if you're tuning into Guild Wars 2 for the first time in a long while, you're going to want to listen closely to this. Uh, so here's how it works. Each Living World episode is available for free during its Spotlight Week, and all you need to do to claim that episode is log in. Uh, season 3, Episode 5 is in the Spotlight starting today, and Season 4 is going to kick off later next month. And just to reiterate, this is a perfect time for veterans and new players to get caught up on the story in preparation for End of Dragons. Each episode has new achievements available, and completing those achievements is going to bring you closer to 2 fairly big rewards. Uh, like Ruby mentioned earlier, you can earn a voucher for an End of Dragons precursor weapon, which is going to give cool. you a head start mm. on earning one of those Orin inspired legendaries. I wonder if with this they'll have the pre-order stuff available like at the, the end. And if you the meta achievement for Living or if they're World gonna Returns, wait, you'll they be rewarded with a legendary a amulet, which will fit quite nicely into your uh, legendary armory. Uh, now it's worth noting that these achievements are permanent, so uh, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, don't worry, you can still jump in a little bit late and catch up on all this content before the release of End of Dragons uh, next year. Uh, but while we're talking about the near future, I'd also like to remind folks that we have the World Boss Rush bonus event kicking off later today. Uh, in that event, you can take out World Bosses, uh, which will progress a community goal and unlock new tiers of rewards for everybody. 
Uh, and there's cool. more details on that event on the guildwars2.com blog. I believe that was posted yesterday. Uh, so like Colin mentioned earlier, I love how they're uh, like, there's all this hype stuff uh, in game, and I'm over here going, summer. shit, I have uh, so much work to do in, today. <laughs> like, like, Alliances is designed to deliver a more balanced world versus world experience oh, right, by right, dynamically right. creating matchups using guilds, uh, alliances, which is basically a player-managed collection of guilds, and active right. world versus world players. That's cool. Uh, this is very different from the current system uh, that we've been using for a number of years that relies on worlds and world linking. And uh, we know this feature is going to have a huge impact on the player experience in World vs. World, and we want to work with our players, with you, to That's get this cool, right. That's cool, because a lot of and people thought that they really were actually going to be releasing going to it in a it. beta state in phases. This is going to allow us to get feedback on each element of that system before we make it a permanent addition to the game. Uh, we mentioned this on July I'm 2nd, excited but to I want read to more about how that's World actually World is a and core yeah, pillar for Guild Wars 2, and we wanted to make sure that we delivered something meaty for the game mode, aside from uh, Elite Specializations, with End of Dragons. And this feature is just the first step of many that we have planned for getting World vs. World where we and you want it to be. Uh, now, Alliances isn't the only major feature coming before the expansion. Like Colin mentioned before, he's scooping everything. Uh, <laughs> we, well, I guess we already talked about it publicly, but uh, we've also, we're working on um, upgrading the engine from uh, DirectX 9 to DirectX 11. Um, this is a long-awaited and highly requested update for Guild Wars 2. I think Ruby can attest <laughs> to that one. Uh, and it all starts with an opt-in beta later this year. This changeover is critical for improving client performance. Oh, I'm and opting into the beta. Oh, yeah. our graphical fidelity, we are opting into which the is beta. Long-term effort that Yo. we're very excited. <sighs> um, we plan to start these betas in just a few short months, and we'll be back in August, which is just a couple I'm opting away, in. We'll talk about those in. <laughs> Put in on the beta, HLA damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, one final note for me: uh, we do have four elite specialization beta events planned for End of Dragons. The first three of these events will each include three of nine new Elite Specializations. The fourth event That's is going to cool. include all nine Elite Specializations. So and it's exactly like Hearthstone. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll be able to play with the existing Elite Specs. Makes sense with who's on board now. you'll be able to play with the Elite Specs and Sea Turtles in existing PvE content, War vs. World, and in PvP. That's awesome. And uh, just a general That's note, a really these betas are available step. to everyone. That's a huge even step, those who in are my on opinion. Accounts. Uh, now, the big beat here is that the first Elite Spec beta <laughs> is just three weeks cookie. away, <laughs> starting on August 17th, running through August 21st. You'll be able to play with the Virtuoso, which we've ah. got to run down from Carl on, and two more yet-to-be-revealed Elite Specializations. Mm -hmm. And as mm. we count down towards those betas, we'll be revealing all of the remaining eight Elite Specs. See, that's a really betas. great way to get of, hype from people, like, for people, too. There's a little sneak peek at the silhouette of the next Elite Spec. Necro. Oh. Oh. Necro. 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 That is awesome. That blows my mind. That was like the graphic that I wanted for Elementalist. Like, that's what I wanted for Elementalist, was Pistol Ellie. So, first of all, hey. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we've been witch working hunter, on yeah. this Arena Elder Dragon statue, and it is finally ready to share with all of you. You can yeah. pre-purchase this. Pistol. Pistol. I want that. I never knew I wanted. For Someone delivery. give me the oh, Arena statue. statue. Give me this now. We've give also me it. partnered with DX Racer to give away a DX Racer Racing all right, Series right back, Pro hope. Gaming Chair. Uh, check out the news on GuildWars2.com to see how to enter and how to pre-purchase the Arena statue. All right, so surely that's everything. No, We've covered no, the merch. Have, we got everything more. done. No, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there is one thing that we've seen a lot of you asking about. Early in July, early this month, we told you that End of Dragons is coming in quote early 2022, and we've wait. Been are we getting an actual release date? Speculate about what early means. <clears throat> I am super excited to oh, we're getting a release date. that the expansion will launch in February and you will be able to pre-purchase today at 11.20 a.m. Pacific time. That is less than two hours away. Oh, you can pre-purchase um, To help pass the time until then or maybe make the wait a little harder, I'm going to let you see the pre-purchase bonus items. and what Oh, that is so cool. I'm pre-ordering this in a couple of hours. Draft. Oh, my God. <laughs> pre-purchase bonus items <clears throat> are the Flame Serpent Weapon Chest, the Xingjie Mosaic Cape, and the Prodigy of Xingjie Title. You will get all of those as soon as you pre-purchase, so you can start showing off some Canthan Flare in-game right away. I'm Every edition this. of End of Dragons oh, has some great extras, so nice. let's go ahead and talk about those two. End of Dragons release um, birthday party. The standard party, edition yo. of End of Dragons includes a free shared inventory slot and the max level boost. 
the deluxe edition comes with those two items plus an additional character slot the Xing Jay Dragon Goat skin three. skin, a <gasps> skin oh, Did you guys see that love, skin? And, <gasps> and Did you guys see that raptor skin? skin? And then the <gasps> ultimate edition which is the best Oh my god, this is like my expansion items, plus 4,000 gems to spend I'm so excited <laughs> that was a lot, you guys. Yeah. Um, we hope you enjoyed this first a look lot. at the Dragons and that you were excited for and everything else we're going to show this year. Um, now it's now. time to start looking forward to the next, elite, tomorrow, spe the next elite specialization and the first beta event coming in August, which I think August begins technically this week. <laughs> <It's>, that's, <coughs> that is very true. <laughs> yeah. You know, one, one note I want to add in. Uh, so you mentioned the identity repair kit that will be available. Yeah. Uh, there are going to be some new looks with the expansion that players can benefit from. So it does come that's in right. quite handy, yeah. I think. Mm. That's, you know, that's, this is good timing for that. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah, so uh, don't forget to check out Living World Season 3, Episode 5, which, again, is going to be free all week. We also have the World Boss Rush event starting today, and uh, the World vs. World Bonus Experience Week is actually active running until Friday of this week. And you can start pre-purchasing End of Dragons at 11.20 a.m. Pacific time today. Go pick it up. Go in-game and show off your cool flair. Yes. Uh, thanks I'm so for joining excited. us, everybody. <laughs> Thank thanks you for joining us. Again. See you next time. We'll see you again. Okay. And then they're that showing was, the trailer again. That was a lot. There's that was a lot. Familiarity. Yeah. Okay, I'm so excited. Nobody thought it was going to be that, like that much either. Half like everybody was like, oh, it's going to be like a 20 minute thing and they're not going to have anything ready. We, we essentially have a release date. And yet, like, I don't. I, I mean, I wish we pulled all the maps, but kind of fire. Who are you so, talking to? Did they say specific just, day in February or was it just, just, just February? Okay. A possibility. Okay, this is so cool. So, over the Your list, children would be trapped in the past who if not for me. The on correct guesses for Their worlds weapons. are carved from the jade so that I gave Devin. purpose. So now I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be curious if they stay ahead of everybody. Or A if it's century of now. progress cannot end this way. It's actually going to be now. It's a race. Canvas, not, not like, just a spoke in some everything. grand cosmic wheel. Like one third of would a great yeah, there's, there's two whole mastery lines they didn't even talk about. On that a whole mastery future. line that they didn't talk about. I won't. Though. I'll find a way to save us all. That is so cool. I was so excited, you guys. Like, I'm literally oh, so excited. Uh, that's Anja, the, um, the North Standard Rider. Right? Yeah. I'm over here like, okay, I have to um, download my, my VOD <laughs> already. <Did you laughs> I like the trailer reaction. Post that on YouTube. Waiting for? Oh, this is so cool. Who is this and lady? I just love the end. This, like, the cycle is reborn. Sure that was June. Yeah, that, that was June. Yeah. So we're, we're, we know we're going to end up punching her, right? Might be. Maybe, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Ew, that was gross. <laughs> That's cool, Art. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh god. god. I'm sorry? Oh god. That is cool. Okay, so there's a banner image that's... Oh, god. That is cool. Let me, let me show this to you guys. 